Hey, hi, hello! Big old trigger warning right off the bat for depression, suicide, and mental health discussions, and I'm being fully serious. Please watch at your own risk, because we're talking about nihilism today, baby! Recently, as my body was gathering dust on my bed, I found myself scrolling through YouTube and was drawn to Khadija Mabose and We're in Hell's videos on nihilism. Well, We're in Hell's is about utopianism, but it falls in the same pattern. In them, they both talk about the doomeristic trend going around about seeing the world as hopeless. Khadija even ends their video with the idea that hope is a practice, while We're in Hell is about considering a better future and working together towards one. Both kind of touch on the same idea that I have been thinking about for a while, but they were both probably kinder than I will be. Because, to be honest, watching the post-ironic meme humor about how nothing matters and let's eat gummy worms and we'll just get into the bog because our existence is pointless and nothing will ever be better but let's joke about it because we've been taught to take mental health seriously but not our own. Let's make a joke about the futility of our existence, baby. Uh, to, to quote the youth, it's not poggers, champ. And I get it. I love the memes, I love the raccoons, and the possums, and the rainbow text, and the glitter, and I love it because thinking your mental health is like sad, and your depression is sad, and the world is getting worse, like how do you cope when you feel like that? Memes, I guess. And it's fine, it's fine, I do it too. I, I understand that this is kind of one of the only outlets we have because our healthcare system is messed up and try getting a psychiatrist or a therapist. It's gonna be very hard for some people. But the point where it becomes an issue is where people will talk about how they are not gonna have children because the earth will be gone by then and the future is going to be a hellish, post-apocalyptic, dystopian wasteland. First of all, I don't want to have kids anyways, but like, I think this idea that the world is going to shit is not helpful. Hi, it's editing Anne. Um, so when I talk about nihilism, I don't mean like the positive nihilism where it's like, um, nothing matters, so let's have fun, let's make sure like our lives are great. Like, I think there's actually value in that. I mean like, the sort of depressive nihilism. I'm not a philosophy person so i don't know like en enough to to talk about it i know the feeling that i'm describing it falls in line with a certain type of nihilism that's what i'm talking about okay again not a philosophy person just someone trying to make a point the idea is that everything happening now is bad and it's going to get worse and it is it is bad right now and it has gotten worse but Hear me out, I'm your therapist now, I'm your psychiatrist, and I'm, I'm telling you it's depression. I'm using myself as a case study, but if this is some way you feel, I think it, it will make sense. So just bear with me while I explain this. My anxiety causes me to worry about everything, and it makes me feel like I have to fix the problems in the world, and everyone is hurting, and I'm not doing enough, and I'm terrible because I can't make everything better. And when this gets to a point where it's so bad, my depression shuts it all down and goes, well, why do you care? Because none of it matters. You can't really fix anything anyways. Come on, sip a smoothie, have some memes. World is ending and there's nothing you can do about it. But then I guess I have a question, right? Because if nothing matters, if everything is going to be pointless, why do most of these people still care about politics? Why do you care about politics? Why are a lot of people so radically left? Why do you, do we still fight for healthcare, the climate, equality, equity, the end of capitalism, if nothing matters, if it's all hell? Surely we'd have better time sipping smoothies and watching British panel shows. Why care at all? Why try? Why go protest? Here, let me offer a better argument. We are doomed if you believe we have no future. You know the bystander effect? I mean, first of all, it's kind of bogus, but I think there is some truth to it. If everyone sees something going on and they think someone else is gonna help, then nothing will ever get better. If you sit there and see, well, I can't make a difference, 
then no difference will be made. And it's the job of all of us to think we can to an extent. You can't think you can do everything, but you have to think that you can help. It's why I believe in voting and recycling. I know it's not gonna make as big of a difference as if our systems were better, but I can't fix systems, I can try. I know I can't change the world or anything, but I want to do something to feel like I'm moving forward, like we're moving forward. Also, I don't know what the future is gonna look like. Do you? Because that would be really cool if you do. If you know exactly what the future is gonna look like, can you like, can you like answer a few questions for me? But for the majority of you, unless for some reason I'm talking to a bunch of oracles, the future is incomprehensible to us. And I am but a little being. But I know what it feels like to feel like you can't do anything, to feel like you think you know what the world is going to like. You can't say the future is going to be bad because then it will be. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like taking a test, but like on a grand universal scale. I took a magic class. I know what you're thinking, but it was like a history and philosophy behind magic kind of class. So it's a little less pretentious than learning how to do magic spells. But I took a magic class and we had to do presentations. If you want to know what mine was about, I did a podcast episode that is kind of similar to it. But one of the presentations was by a psychology major and witch who had us participate in a spell before finals week. She talked about how when she was stressed or needed it with big life events, she would cast the spell or manifest success. She had us focus on the things we wanted to put ourselves in a good mood. If you think nihilistically about the world and that nothing matters, nothing will change, it's not productive. But I understand that's hard to hear. The world is so big and you are so small, but you don't need to think that it's all gonna end. You do not know what the future will be like. And that is the most amazing and terrifying thing anyone could ever tell you. You do not know what's gonna happen the next day. Now, if you're me and you're paranoid constantly, that's a terrifying prospect, but it also means that things could be a lot better than you expect them to be. And obviously that requires work. And I'm not being like, manifest success, get on that girl boss grind so you can make money, money, money. No. I mean, think about what makes you happy and think about how we can control our future and what you can do to be a part of that because you cannot do everything alone. Like we are up against big, big, big systems. But again, listen, you don't know what the future will look like. And now I've tricked you because you thought you knew what this video was about. You thought this video was about nihilism, but no, 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 no. It's about something more abstract than nihilism. It is my response to nihilism to when we look into the void. What do you do when you stare into the void of nothingness? And I have a question for you now that is my actual thesis. Drop the title card, baby. It's getting fresh up in here. How do we comprehend the incomprehensible? This is the part where we get experimental. And if you don't like the style of like low research, let's just like talk the talk, let's hear my thoughts. Feel free to tell me because I, 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 I thought this would be fun. So I am running a short Dungeons and Dragons campaign set in the 1950s, or as it's written in my notes, 1940s. Our sorcerer is bonded to an unknowable being. And as we progress, I have to try to figure out how to make the being more knowable. But it's difficult to create something I cannot know and to bring it into this realm. The idea was whirling in my mind when, as my dad and I were watching the last bit of sun fade from the sky on June 21st. It was past 10 p.m. and we were trying to figure out if it was brighter, more north or south of us. Clearly, we both did absolutely incredible top of the class in astrology. While we were able to easily learn and remember with our big scientific minds and not Google reminded us about the Earth's tilt and rotation around the sun and how that affects the seasons, 
something we definitely knew in third grade and definitely knew now, we began to talk about an article he was writing. An article about how we need to drastically change the education system in America in a good way. My dad's a cool person. I know what you may be thinking. Is it a history thing? What does he want taught in schools? And that's what he refutes. That, your line of thinking right there, you trying to suss out in your mind what he wanted to be taught in schools was the issue. He refutes the idea that there are standards for kids to learn. Like, kids have to read To Kill a Mockingbird because it's a required text. And at the end of the high school, they have learned all the stuff they need to know to be an educated adult. What if kids decided what they got to be taught? Now, well, hold on, old man, you may say to my dad, who often refers to himself that way. That's absolutely ludicrous. What about basic math and science and reading? Well, they will have to learn those things to understand the stuff they want to learn about. And anyway, I'm not arguing with him, and I'm not arguing with him on your behalf. All I'll say is, I was one of the people saying, no, hold on, old man. I was one of the people who thought he sounded outrageous and strange, even though he usually does, but that's besides the point. In my mind, I was like, we need an education system. There are things we need to know. I couldn't picture a world, a wide scale school system like he envisioned. And he didn't have all the ideas either for every school and every way it would be just a system of schools that had done it. And this article isn't a legislation or an exact method, it's an idea. An idea to overhaul what we currently have. And I can't picture what it would look like. I have no idea. My brain has a better time picturing whatever ludicrous things I do in D&D than it does looking at a school. I cannot picture it. That's because that is a huge change to the way I have been taught to perceive things. I can't picture how that would change the generations after me or society in general. And no one can, again, unless you're an oracle. If so, again, I need some assistance. Please help me out. It's getting really bad out here. And you know why? Because to everyone else, the future is unknowable. And I caught myself on that when I was arguing and going, now hold on old man. And I said, well, I guess a lot of things seem unknowable until they start to happen, like the internet. You know the meme that if you showed this to a Victorian child, you'd break their brain? And think about it. How would you go back into the past and tell someone one day there will be a box that contains all the knowledge in the world and in that box you can talk to anyone and we use this box to feel sad or happy the box can sing to us and the box can show us images or our friends the box knows the time and knows when you have to go somewhere and it knows the directions and it knows where you live and humans made it. Then we think about the future, right? And there are books talking about what they thought the world would look like in 1985 or what they thought the world would look like in 2012. And they didn't know, they were wrong. And it's funny to look back and be like, oh, we don't have that yet. We couldn't picture everything that could happen because it took steps to get there. It grew. Look at how the visions of a Simpsons future changes throughout the eras. Look at the style, the fashion, the year that they said the episodes were set in. Because one person cannot know the future. There's a void of what is next, what we know we can create, what we can move towards, what's possible. And sure, maybe you say we can predict most things though because people are working on the next steps of the future but they're working on the next steps because once they make something someone's going to make something off of that and someone's going to make something off of that and then there's always discoveries to be made and yet you could be a cynic and say we can predict everything because everything that has happened has happened and that someone's planned the future but we don't even know everyone in the world yet and we don't know everyone who's going to be here we don't know what 
everyone is doing, we don't know what breakthrough is next. We, we can't. And that's kind of amazing, right? Sure, that time kind of is a circle, as I said in my last video, as a joke. There are things that happen over and over again. But history rhymes. It's going to because people are people, but there are things that we can't predict and there are things we can make better. Referencing back to my dad's proposal, I tried to rationalize what I could not comprehend. I said, well, it's kind of like abolishing the police, I guess. Most people don't know what a world after that would look like. And we can't truly know until it happens. Hopefully it will happen. We can look at other places, but this is America. And for the most part, most of it looks like defunding, putting money into other places like mental health services, decriminalizing sex work and drugs. It means a lot of things that I think would make our society better and that are possible and that makes sense when you break down a big word, even though these are technically big changes. And then my dad said, well, things can't get done if they happen slowly, which if you've noticed has derailed everything I've said until now. They have to be radical to overturn change. And maybe he is right. The only way forward is radical or else we keep making small progress that can be reversed, that has been reversed. And maybe we have to dramatically overhaul everything because we know that this isn't working and maybe something new will. We keep a status quo of neoliberalism that has stayed directly in the middle of two groups who are pushing the boundaries of their left and right ideologies, a world that to me at least seems will jump off the deep end in one direction or the other, a world where things repeat because all we can have is the middle line. Roe v. Wade was just overturned. We are back to something we know, a fight that we will keep on fighting. And it feels hopeless, like we are locked in a cycle of incremental progress that must repeat itself. This hopeless feeling isn't new to a lot of people because things always feel like they are in jeopardy. It feels like the same fights keep happening. If you look at pandemics and political upheaval and fascist leaders and revolutions. It feels like it will keep happening over and over again. It feels like the world is a circle and I am just a little rat on a wheel. And that's like a denialism, right? It feels like, oh, well, nothing will change. How do we change that? How do we do a big grand thing? We haven't done a big grand thing yet. We're in the weird bit of late stage capitalism where everything just feels strange and like, a simulation. The system doesn't work because a lot of us are not represented well in our government and voting doesn't work because there is a divide in Democrats and Republicans that is so great that if we vote where I live, it kind of doesn't matter. I still will. My vote won't change anything that comes to president of the country and I don't get to pick the Supreme Court. I don't get to decide a lot of things. And when I do get to decide, it's what to eat for dinner. And that's not fair. You should decide what to have for dinner because what if I pick something you don't like? Oh, are, are you sure you want me to choose? Well, okay, I'll, I'll choose like a few places and then you can really choose. I think it's time for something different. And you might say, well, we know what this is like. But the problem is, I think being radical is unknowable. We want to do something that hasn't been done before, right? And that's really scary because we don't know what we're doing. Like we kind of know, we can have ideas in place. And when you we break things down, they make more sense. But those things still need to happen. They have to incrementally, they can get reversed. How do we do it? How do we change it all? You said we need a big change, but we can't do it from inside these systems. So what then? Because I guess that's the question, right? If I keep saying, we need to be radical. We need to change things quickly. We need to have this big upheaval and a jump into the great unknown. What am I even talking about? Nihilism comes creeping in. The cloud of unknowing is an anonymous text in Christian mysticism. Thank you, Wikipedia that basically refutes the point that we can know God. And now I'm not a Christian, but I'm gonna explain it this way. It's the idea that God is unknowable because God is great and powerful 
and those things that we cannot. And so we cannot comprehend God. If you try to, you cannot, because God is everything that you cannot know. There are things that you cannot know. You have to live in that space where there are things that you will never have answers to. You can get lost in the idea that it is known. And so what does this mean? The text basically says that the only way to understand God is to embrace what we do not know. So maybe the only way to understand our future and to get out of this slump is to not have every answer. What am I really trying to say here? What's the point of talking about politics? Well, I want things to change and I want it to be radical and maybe that can be in the system. I don't know. I want it to not go back to what we had. I want it to be better than what we had. Videoception. Hey. Okay, so what I meant to say in the section that I didn't say well, so I cut it in the video is there are a lot of people who see the, the news and want things to be better. I kind of want like drastic change in one way or another. So, you know, so it feels like the world uh, isn't ending and they they want all of these um things uh, uh, politically that's what i was trying to say but we currently a lot of us leftists do not believe that this can happen we don't believe things can change and what do you do when things can't change you joke about it because what else are you supposed to do when it feels so hopeless? Because everything I said sounds great, but how do we get there? This is the world we got, a world where you're supposed to work for yourself and not the betterment of the world, of everyone. That's not how you get ahead. The American dream is for one person and that person is you. So we traded in our ability to care for others, for apathy, because a world like the one I presented seems impossible, unknowable, once you think about all the ins and outs about it. Because bigger picture around all of this is you are thinking about yourself as an individual. And what are our communist memes about? If not to say we, this is ours. This chicken nugget, it's ours. This tree, it's ours this collection of vintage baby heads you better bet that's ours we are small we are little what do you do when you think you are the one who has to change everything because that's what this society has taught you you are the one on the pedestal and it's a pedestal and you're the only one who's allowed to be on it and you have to fix everything by yourself and doesn't that seem so hard wouldn't it just be either to cu curl up in a ball and cry i mean it sounds pretty great right now but I gotta have a better conclusion than that. So what is it? What's my answer? What's my argument? I'm not gonna say I don't know. I'm not gonna look at you and say, oh, I've just talked about the incomprehensible and my final argument is I don't know what everything's gonna look like. I'm gonna tell you something. I am going to give you what I consider an answer when we're staring at the face of a future that is incomprehensible instead of being nihilistic. What makes me hopeful? I went to a protest recently. I had been depressed all summer, or most of the summer up until that point, and my anxiety and depression was going in waves. We drove three hours to a big city and protested for abortion rights in a state where things feel unchangeable. At first, I was nervous. I didn't want to make a sign. I didn't want anyone to see me, but as we left the parking garage, I started to see more and more people carrying large signs that had come up to the protest location because you don't get to know where I live. Throughout the protest, more and more people kept arriving and as I joined in their shouts and listened to their aspirations, it made me feel less hopeless. Like something could be done. Like things could change. I think we often feel isolated on our computers and our phones which bleh, sounds awful and old, but I mean they are great for socialization, but as you scroll through the constant information, angry comments, tragedies, you start to feel like it's your job to fix everything. That the world is a mess and you are horrible if you don't fix everything. If I don't care about everything, I care about nothing. And I mean it truly. I try to care about political issues and not just in the social justice performative kind of way. 
I mean things that are actively destroying the lives of people and things that should be natural to care about. But I can't care about them when I feel like this. I get lost in nihilism of thinking nothing matters because nothing will change. So what's the point of anything? Everything always stays the same and the future will too. But I believe that is a lack of knowing. I need to know everything. I have my funeral plan, grim, but you know, I want my death to be spectacular, right? What is it all been for if not to die dramatically? And the truth is, as I've said, I do not know everything, but no one knows everything. And no one knows what future we are rushing into. No one, even the nihilists know, who nihilists who have given up know where we are going. And maybe we can't visualize the future or a different government or anything, but we don't know if we don't try. So maybe that is what we can do in the face of the incomprehensible. Try to steal light and forge a path out there. Anyways, that's the video. Hopefully it makes sense. I don't know. It got a lot longer than it was supposed to be. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe or unsubscribe if you're done with me. Yeah, that's it. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.